This October, late at night, I left my home very early in the morning to make a three-hour drive to Pittsburgh, where I would catch an Amtrak train to ride with my bike to Washington, D.C. From there, I would start a six-day ride along the CNO Canal and Greater Allegheny Passage to make my way over 359 miles back to my car in Pittsburgh. While I have done this journey before, this would be the first time I did it this late in the year amongst the autumn leaves. It would also be the first time the Amtrak train was running on time, which was more than a little surprise. I loaded my bike and was guided to my sleeping area, where I hoped to make up for an all-nighter with some rest before I started my ride. The forecast was calling for a mix of weather, much cooler than my typical rides through the summer. Although the weather forecast for Pittsburgh was cooler, even at some point calling for snow. My ride was to become a journey through the seasons as the colors of the leaves intensified and the temperatures dropped as I made my way back to Pittsburgh. After getting a little rust on the train, I woke to find the trees showing off their party dresses through the windows. I grabbed breakfast and the time on the train passed quickly. The train arrived on time into Washington, D.C. I got my bike situated at the station and filled my water bottles. After making a quick stop at an REI that was nearby, I started out at about 2 o'clock p.m. For this first day, I planned to ride about 55 miles to Lock House 28, which I decided to rent this trip out of curiosity, a desire to get some more miles in despite starting late in the day, and to get out of the rain that was forecast for the evening. I always enjoy making my way from the station through our nation's capital to the start of the canal in Georgetown. Mile marker zero for the CNO is a trick to find. It is almost an as though they intended to hide it. But with a little help, I did find it. Right over there, brother. Oh, there we go. Thanks. I then made my way across the canal and to the beginning of the trail. With the days getting dark earlier, it became apparent that on some days, such as this first one, I would be a little pressed for time. But six days is what my schedule allowed this trip. Although the rain would hold off during almost my entire ride this day, Rain from the night before left some puddles along the way. During most of the ride along the CNO, the canal is situated next to both the canal and the Potomac River. It's a beautiful river. The waterway of the canal varies in size, condition, and the amount of water. Leaves were changing in color and it was a thrill to ride through the trees, though the colors would intensify more the further I rode along this trip. The 
the conditions of the locks vary as well, with some working, some dry, and some inoperable, but letting water through. I also enjoy the animals along the trail. Herons and other birds, chipmunks and squirrels and deer, turtles and an occasional snake. It became clear that both rain and the dark of night were making their way to the trail, and that I might beat the rain, but I wasn't going to beat the darkness. The lock house at Lock 28 was without electricity or running water but it was going to be nice to be able to set up late at night without having to hang my hammock. Although when I made my way inside, I was a little surprised just how dark it was inside. The shutters of the house were also closed, which made it dark even in the morning. It was cozy with pictures and articles about the people who used to live there. There were many beds upstairs, with children's beds stored under the other beds, which would make this an excellent place for a group to use. It had a porch, picnic table outside, fire ring, and wood available. For the second day, I planned to ride about 77 miles to the Little Pool campsite. A wrong turn on a detour would add some more miles to that plan. It was to be a dry day, and despite a good bit of rain the previous night, the trail service had much fewer puddles than the first day. Brunswick was not far from Lock 28, so I decided to make my way into town, where I found a great cup of coffee and a breakfast sandwich at Beans on the Belfry. It was a neat cafe, a church converted into a coffee shop. I also grabbed a muffin to have later on the trail. sun came out this day. The Potomac shined its beauty as well. In addition to there being many free campsites along the CNO, they also have water pumps. Water wasn't as much of a need this trip due to the cooler weather, but I was glad they were there. They have a taste of iodine, some more than others, but with an electrolyte tablet or a packet, it's not that noticeable. This spot, Dam 4, is one of my favorites for stopping at for a break. The breaks are some of my favorite moments of my biking trips.
On some trips I take, the scenery can become a little bit monotonous, but that is never a problem with the CNO or the Gap. This is the detour where I took at least one wrong turn, which I of course left out of this video. I made a stop into Williamsport to pick up a sub from Tony's Pizza, an Italian restaurant. These aqueducts, bridges of water, are amazing. It is hard for me to imagine canal boats traveling over them. This is Dam 5, another great spot. And that girl was running that fast, though it looks as though I had sped the video up. I made it to the Little Pool campsite before it was too dark. Although the lock house was nice the previous night, I was looking forward to a good night's sleep outside in my hammock. I found a great spot for doing just that. The third day was to be a 68 mile ride into Cumberland where I would stay at a hotel and get some clothes washed. This is going to be another good day of weather, though it was cooler too. I made a stop into Hancock for breakfast and to pick up some paracord that I needed for my tarp, and then I got back onto the trail. This day brought with it more frequent and deeper puddles. Also more roots and ruts, all of which could be hidden under the leaves. The Paw Paw Tunnel is an amazing location along the CNO, though I actually enjoy the trail along the rocks to the Paw Paw Tunnel more than the tunnel itself. However, that section remains temporarily closed, and instead one gets to hike over the mountain. There are some steep sections, but with patience I made it up slowly. And there's a reward after one does make it up, with some incredible views.
It was nice to get back to the trail. There were, were several other bikers on the trail, though I was surprised I did not find many of them camping. The weather was just perfect this day. It was nice to get to the hotel and to use their bike cleaning station. There was also a small festival right outside the hotel with live music, which I took in from the patio of the hotel. For the fourth day, the first day of the gap for me, I planned to ride about 45 miles to the Husky Haven campground in Rockwood. I woke up, got breakfast, packed, and headed out for what would be an uphill climb the first half of the day. It is here that one switches from the CNO Canal to the Gap Rail to Trail. It was going to be a beautiful day again. The Gap has several bridges and tunnels, all of which I enjoy, along with the rivers that run alongside it. colors of the leaves did not disappoint. The temperatures drop inside the tunnel. It's a great relief during those hot days, but it became pretty brisk during this day. As one reaches the end of the climb, one first arrives at the Mason-Dixon line. It is not much further before one arrives at an area with benches to look out across the countryside. This is the Big Savage Tunnel, both the longest and coolest along the trail. Once the Eastern Continental Divide is reached, it is a very slight descent the rest of the trail. Most seem to prefer going the other direction though. The 
Salisbury Viaduct is another favorite spot along the trail. The viaduct itself is amazing, but also on the western side, there's a beautiful spot near a little cemetery, too. The trail surface along the gap is impeccable. It was nice to come to the Husky Haven campground, though on this trip I knew it would be my last stay there as they are ending their operation. The owners have always been very friendly and reliable. The area is wonderful. They've had a shower house and other amenities, including a bike washing station. And I'm glad I had this one last opportunity to stay there and bid farewell to what has been a wonderful resource. I thank the owners too for having provided us with this campground for so many years. I stopped that evening at the Trailhead Brewing Company in Rockwood for dinner and a drink before a good night's sleep. The forecast was calling for rain the next day and snow the final day. I'm thankful that forecast ultimately changed. However, it was also calling for headwinds of 15 miles an hour and gusts of 25 to 35 miles an hour, which did seem to hold true. After bidding farewell to Husky Haven, I planned to ride about 67 miles to the Cedar Creek campground. I felt like I got a good night's sleep and the cooler air of about 46 degrees was an interesting change. It was nice to be on the trail, and it was nicer still to get alongside the river. The Pinkerton Tunnel, as well as both Pinkerton Bridges, were an amazing way to start the day. However, this Lower Castleman River Bridge is one of my favorites. I always enjoy stopping and going down by the river to take in the sights and relax, to breathe. It did not disappoint. This middle day of the Gap Trail is one of my favorite sections of the trip. I stopped into Ohio Pile for lunch, and I enjoyed the bridges on my way out as well.
The wind caused many leaves to float down like snow. There were several other cyclists out this day, many of them packed for touring. It was good to pull into Connellsville, where I not only got a few snacks and drinks, but also made my normal stop at the kickstand kitchen to pick up a sandwich for dinner later. This section also provides access to many small towns, and I try to imagine them when this trail was an active rail line. Though during this trip, they lack the protection from the wind that the trees provide along most areas of the trail. I spent this night at the Cedar Creek Campground. It is free, it has shelters, water, working restrooms, and all that I needed this night. I set my hammock up inside a shelter and later hung the rain fly to block some of the wind. It was comfortable. I went to sleep expecting rain overnight or in the morning. I woke to find that the rain did not come. It did not come during the day either, except for a brief moment. On this day, I planned to ride about 40 miles into Pittsburgh, the end of the trail and of this journey for me. It was definitely cooler this day. Everyone biking along the trail seemed friendly, more hellos and I might say a sense of camaraderie, with each of us facing these unusually cold temperatures of about 36 degrees. I enjoy riding new trails for the first time of facing the unknown. However, even when riding the same trail, no two trips are the same. Each brings its own challenges, its own unique experiences. This journey along the CNO and Gap lived up to that, particularly with the cooler weather and the brilliant colors. Once I pulled into McKeesport, I knew that the trail would not only change, becoming more urban, but also that I was getting very close to completing my ride. Even as one gets closer to Pittsburgh, with the steel mills and factories along the river, nature still flows down from the mountains and surrounds. The 
increasingly gray clouds did not make me feel confident that I would end this ride without rain. But in fact, I did. I love riding this last leg to the fountain at the point, and it did not disappoint this time, flowing up into the sky in the wind. This will be remembered by me as one of my favorite bike trips. Six days, almost 360 miles, good weather and wonderful colors. 